This is what I came up with. First we have our time stepping loop on the outside for n equal 1 to n max. And then you probably update the hy fields first. So we can have regular updates and I'd probably put the hy ints updates first, the incident grid, and then you can have the regular updates, updates on the hy fields, which is our primary grid, and then we need corrections at the total field scatter field interfaces and this is on HY in the primary grid. Now that we've updated all the H fields in both grids, so they'll be time stepped in sync with each other, we can move on to the electric fields. So now we can implement the source in the incident grid. So I'll say on easy ints, and this will be at i equal 1, because we're going to start the source right at the left side of the grid. And after that, we can have regular updates on the rest of the easy ints fields. Of course, not the last one, because that's a PEC. And here, since this will be a loop that'll just go from 2 to i max minus 1, it doesn't include the source. So this could be, the source could be either before or after the regular easy updates. Then we can move on to the regular updates on the EZ fields in the primary grid. So that's just what we're calling EZ right now. And then, lastly, we need corrections on EZ at the two total field scatter field interfaces to incorporate the plane wave into the primary grid. And that should be the main sections of the time stepping loop. Now try implementing a total field scatter field plane wave source condition in a one dimensional FDTD code. Take one of the early one dimensional FDTD codes you generated in the first design challenge for this course, or you can adapt the final one dimensional FDTD code that you developed for the first design challenge, but change it so that the only models free space and also change it so it doesn't have any PML. We're not going to worry about PML. We're going to run a basic numerical test of this 1D code with a total field scatter field plane wave source condition that you can find in the third edition of the Tafloff and Havnus book on FDTD. If you don't have that book, uh, I'll give you everything you need to run the simulation, so don't worry about it. In your 1D FDTD code, we're going to set dx equals to 1e to the minus 3, s is going to be 0.99, i max is 400, we're going to have 400 grid cells across our grid, n max, we're going to run it for 415 time steps, and tfsf, the grid cell, the distance from the edge of the grid where we're going to have the total field scatter field region, is going to be 100. And so that's a little bit large than we would normally want it to be, but we're not implementing PML, and so we're going to put it a little further away than we normally would. And for the source, we will model just a Gaussian. So this is not a Gaussian modulating a sinusoid, it's just a Gaussian. So we're going to have n half is equal to 20 time steps, and n naught is n half times three. So the source waveform for the Gaussian, if you don't remember, is the exponential 
minus n minus n naught divided by n half and to the power of 2. Remember the source is only modeled in the incident grid. That is what's going to create the plane wave. So only put that in the incident grid. Plot the primary grid EZs. So we want to look at EZ, plot EZ. And keep in mind that since total field scatter field is equal to 100, there will be a delay before you see the wave propagating into the primary grid. It's going to take a while for the wave to get over to 100 grid cells. So you might also want to plot the incident EZs to check the waveform in the incident grid.